Hello, my friends, your buddy Phil here, project management trainer and coach. Today, we're going to take a look at a piece of software called Project Libre. Now, on the surface, it looks like any old software tool. Until you hit new, let's type in a project name. We'll call it PMBOK2 and OK it. And voila, what do you have? You have a scheduling tool. This is totally free. You can find it on their website. I'm gonna put a link below. But this is a great answer for a lot of people who really wanna do good scheduling, but they are not able to pay for Microsoft projects. It's very pricey, price prohibitive. But for those of you sticklers who wanna do stuff the right way, maybe you uh, don't have your Primavera or Plan View, one of those fancy tools, and you want something to see you through in a company, maybe in a new company, like I've been in, in new companies and look for software tools that I could use. Well, this is one of them. It's totally free. Okay. So open source stuff. So let's just start off a project. We're going to go to file and hit the information field. And this is very similar to the project field in MS project. Uh, we're going to go to the 21st of June. And that's when the project will start. And we'll just type in a few tasks. Task one, we'll just say initiate. Task two, plan. Task three, execute. Task four, monitor and control. Task five, close. So you have five tasks. Now the next thing is how long will each one take? Let's say this is a task for you to study for your exam. Let's say initiating takes two days, planning takes 24 days. Now that's long. Let's shorten it to 12 days. Still long, five days. You see how easy it is to maneuver in and out of this? Executing three days, monitoring and controlling four days, and closing, we're going to make it two days. And there you have it. You got your durations. Now you do know the cardinal sin of Microsoft Project is not to type in the start and finish dates. Don't do that. Same with Project Lib. Don't do it. Just link the tasks as you need to. So we're going to highlight these and we are going to link them. So let's go to task and link. And there you have it. All of your tasks linked. You have your start date, your finish date. You can see where the project is going. That simple. You've even got a fancy save baseline feature. And you can save the baseline just like you would in Microsoft Project, baseline one, two, three, or four. In this case, we could just say baseline for everything. Okay, boom, there's your baseline. Now, how do you call up your baseline? You insert the column and you look for baseline. Baseline. Baseline itself. So we're looking for baseline start. That's it. And we're also going to insert baseline finish, baseline finish. There you go. Baseline start, baseline finish. And then as you would do on a typical project, you also have your actual start and your actual finish. That's what you're going to use to track, right? So you got your actual finish. Let's insert our actual start as well. And there you have it. So assume your project needed to start earlier. We could always go back to file information and we could make it start earlier. Let's say we decide uh, it's going to start uh, or it started on the fourth in the past. Okay. That's all. And it starts on the fourth. And let's say you wanted to update it to show that work has started. You can put in an actual start date of the fourth. And you can put in an actual finish date of the fourth, for example. And it shows you the progress bar right there. You see the progress bar? Let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, make it a little bit bigger. So zoom in. There you see. You see the progress bar right there that shows you it's 100% complete. That is a pretty cool feature, just like MS Project. It's crazy. And then if you wanted to compare that to the baseline, you still got your baseline start, showing how good you are. You started on the 4th of June, but the baseline was really meant to be the 21st. And you could track your project in this very simplistic way. Also in resources, it has your resource sheet. You could assign a resource to some of these. 
for example. And going back to the task view and, and Gantt, you can begin to assign resources to these. Let's zoom out. So just click on whatever you want to assign resources to and assign resources right up there. And you can assign your resources. It's that simple. So John can see, all right, I'm working on the initiate task, planning, sign another resource, just like you would in MS project, business as usual. And this has become a favorite tool of mine in just a few hours because anything that's open source and there to help the masses of project managers who are struggling you know, to get good software. I mean, they make it so price prohibitive that no one wants to do good scheduling anymore. But now that you've got something like this that's free, hey, you can have your good schedules, you can build your Gantt charts, you can print them out, you can share them with stakeholders. And to be quite honest, there's so much volume in a tool like MS Project or Primavera and I've used both. And I can tell you that a lot of projects today, people just tap out and give up on good scheduling because they don't have a robust enough tool. But I mean, this has all the bells and whistles, start, actual start, actual finish, baseline start, baseline finish, resources. It even has a leveling button. I mean, what else are you looking for? It even has an RBS for you to see a resource breakdown structure. It has a WBS, as you can see up there. It even has a network diagram view. I mean, how cool is that? Oh, and task usage, by the time you start putting in hours that these folks actually worked, it is just like one of those earlier versions of MS Project. It doesn't have everything. Yes, it doesn't have everything, but it's good enough to get started, get rocking and rolling and moving to uh, schedule the right way. Uh, some folks may say, well, what if I wanted to indent tasks? Well, you can do that. You can always add new tasks. So I can say develop project charter, for example, and identify stakeholders. And you can just indent those under initiate. You know, if you want to put something under planning, just add, right click, new, and develop project management plan, and uh, all others, for example, highlight, right click, indent. Boom, there you go. You can see we've got some resource allocation issues. You still get those here. Just brilliant, just brilliant, my friends. So I wanna encourage you to support this organization that's put this out there in that use it, share it, let other people know about it. And yeah, let's schedule away, schedule away. Um, as far as linking, cause I know uh, I really didn't show you that you can link subtasks as well. So just control, hold control down and select and just link, just like that. And they're linked and then you can link, uh, identify stakeholders and develop project management plan like that. Link and link this and this link. See, you can have a schedule just like you should with all the tasks moving along in one cohesive whole, like a train leaving the station and not leaving everything else behind. All right. I hope this helps you share with someone, help those folks who are trying to do scheduling the right way. Take care. Bye for now.